You are not Morgan Sullivan. You are Diane you are Thursby. Not you are not married, married to Amy Sullivan. Sullivan. Your wife is Diane Thursby. Your Santa wife is Diane Thursby. You are Jack Thursby. You do not live in the same house. You are Jack Thursby. My wife is Diane Thursby. You are Jack 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 Thursby. This is Babylon I Dead, a series of films devoted to breaking you out of your comfort zone. Films you may not have seen, films you may not have even heard of, but films designed, created to blow your fragile little minds. Some of these are old films, some new, low budget or not, foreign language or English speaking. There is no rhyme or reason to this selection other than to say these are films of which I adore. Films I hope you will too. And this series is not just for the cinephile, not exclusively for those on their journey of film discovery. No, this is a series dedicated to those feeling the pangs of discontent, the constant disappointment with what is perceived as cinema, but is far from the truth. To these people, to you I say this, come with me, take a chance. We may not always agree, but I will show you some amazing films and maybe together we can wean you off your drug adult Hollywood addiction because cinema is alive and well, thank you very much. You just gotta know where to look. The world is bland and sterile, homogenous, row upon row of cookie cutter houses, shops, cafes, all clones of themselves. The same boring, brutalist architecture blocks out everything in a grey ooze of blandness. This is the world that Jeremy Northam's character finds himself in, that we find ourselves in. This is the world he wants to escape. So he enlists with Digicourt to spice up his dull existence, to become a corporate spy replete with new identity and spy pen. And it doesn't take long for our man to become swept up in this new life. He starts to embellish his cover, getting lost in his lies, including those to his overbearing, cuckolding wife, which encourages our man to press on. The missions themselves are boring, tedious, one dull conference after another. But as his lies start to grow, so does his confidence. And it's here that he meets Lucy Lou's Rita the only colour in this cold, drab world. The promise of something exciting, something special, but also something dangerous. What she promises, what she delivers, is accompanied by twists and turns, lies and deceit, cross and double cross that ultimately spins us and our man around until we don't know which way is up or down. Vincenzo Natelli is perhaps a name you haven't heard of, but you've seen his work on shows like Hannibal and American Gods and Westworld. Perhaps you've heard of the 1998 Cube, his debut motion picture in which a small group of strangers must solve the puzzle of their own imprisonment and of the jail itself. Right through the noughties, he would continue to make great thrillers, including the fantastically creepy 2009 Splice, one of the last great mid-budget body horror films that, like Carpenter's The Thing, sadly didn't find its audience. But it's the second feature, Cypher, originally titled The Company Man. This is the film that I've chosen to speak about tonight. What I love about this movie is many and varied. Jeremy Northam playing a man, playing a man, a man unspooling. Lucy Liu is great in an understated role, her apparent natural coldness well suited to the story. The use of color in music is wonderful, as is the pace of the film. It starts off slowly, purposefully. Everything's grey. The look of one airport, one hotel, one bar, each melding into the other. The sameness so bad that it's hard to tell at times where we are. And this is no accident. This is part of the trick. And perhaps that's what I love the most, that this film, much like Jonathan Nolan's The Prestige, is a magic trick disguised as a film. One of those rare delights you watch for a second time round for the joy of finding the clues you missed the first time you watched them. Here we see Natelli's embryonic style emerging, his mastery of movement and colour touching on the wildness that his later work would expand upon, arguably to the pinnacles of the aforementioned Hannibal, where his desire to explore the dark side of human nature is allowed to run riot, untethered by the constraints of the Hollywood system. Compared to his later work, visually this film is 
not flashy, but then the story demands that it is so until it demands that it's not. Make of that what you wish. Nevertheless, in Scyther, you can see Natalie stretching, warming up, and it is exciting stuff. It's unfortunate that this film isn't more loved by the public or by its distributor. Indeed, in trying to find a full HD download, I came up empty. The only copy available to stream or to download, standard definition only. Shame on you, Channel 4, the current rights holder in the UK. It is available to buy on Blu-ray, and I would advise you to do so, but if you want it now, you're gonna have to settle for standard definition. But don't let that dissuade you. What we have here is worth far more than the price of admission. And if you do know of an HD copy, a legal HD copy, let me know in the comments. It's a sad world indeed in which Natelli hasn't been able to make many more movies. The current climate of tentpole $100 million plus pictures versus low budget horrors leaves little room in between the natural space that Natelli occupies. Like his contemporary Fincher, it is a struggle for him to get his vision on the screen. But unlike Fincher, luck hasn't been with him. The gods of film have been unkind. But cinema's loss is television's gain, and he's found himself amongst his peers, leading in a new golden age of television. And perhaps cinema will one day welcome him back once it's done with its obsession with Greek gods in latex tights. So grab yourself a copy, sit on back, turn the lights down, and enjoy tonight's movie, Vincenzo Natelli's sci-fi thriller, Cypher. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the other side.